Abayi Yasharel, the house of Israel, we all gathered together in this, and we thank the Father for this opportunity and praise Yah. As the them that are gathered, and we're two or three gathered together in his name, he is definitely in the presence, in the midst of us, and there is no space and distance at all between us. We are gathered in the same room, uh, thanks to this technology, Zoom. <laughs> same room with Zoom. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. That we have right here in most of the scriptures, in most of the scriptures, they say trumpet, but it's really a shofar. Only certain brass and 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 silver, um, tempered tempered polished silver uh, trumpets were used for special calls in the Bayi Kodol. Uh, but most of the time, when you see the word trumpet, it's the sound of the shofar. Okay, found in Yoel chapter two as well, but in, but in the, when you see sometimes trumpet, it's sometimes it's they'll mention in the scriptures where it'll say they blew the brass or the brazen or 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 the 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 silver pure silver trumpets. Those were real tr long trumpets, but most of the time it's the shofar. Okay. And uh, that particular sound. How many of you know an uh, animal was slaughtered and sacrificed to produce that trumpet for us? <laughs> so when we blow it, when we blow it, because and that's why I tell everybody to, to really clean their shofars when even if they first buy it, clean it out with baking soda, clean it out and with disinfection and clean it out real good and use a I use a long wire net brush to brush it real good and get all the little uh, blood chips little blood scabs inside out because you don't want to breathe it in because if it gets in your throat it could be a problem okay so I get into your vote you know somewhere there and, and it happened to me one time and it I couldn't talk for a while. It was really bad for for about a week. I accidentally sucked it in from a brand new shofar that was out on Ben Yehuda Street, and uh, so that's why I tell everybody: you blow out, never suck in. Always blow it out and get your air to the side and blow it out to to the to the to the blow part of the tip. Okay, and now when we blow that shofar, there's supernatural events take place. In the spiritual realm, the demons tremble by the sound of the shofar. I blew it in different places and locations, and people literally went into vision and saw the demons putting their ear, hands in their ears and skirmishing out of the rooms, out of the buildings. I've gone to Anaheim Hills and blew it on a hill where they were performing porn in the back of a million dollar home. We blew it and it messed up the whole porn. They had to run in their house, <laughs> put towels on and run in the house. They didn't know nobody was up there. Somebody told me what was going up ahead of time. We went to Sun Valley also where a lot of porn's done up in the Hollywood behind Hollywood and Griffin Park, there's Sun Valley, and there's a lot of porn industry there too. We blew it there, and we'd command those walls to come down. We went to different mapped areas of Hollywood, Beverly Hills, and Los Angeles, and we blew the shofar. And I've always get people to say that somebody sees something. We blew shofars to sick people. Uh, uh, they were bedridden and they come out of the bed. Supernatural things take place by the sound of that shofar blast, at the blast of the shofar, okay? And we we blow to let everyone recognize that sound because how many of you know when we people that come out of Christianity, they, they think it's a trumpet. They think it's a trumpet. They don't know that the sound of that blast, okay? has a supernatural effect. He was slaughtered, it was sacrificed, and the enemy cannot stand that sound. The demons tremble by that sound of our, and when we apply, we have the Ruach Kadosh inside us, and we're one of those menorah candles 
burning from Yom Teruah. One of these candlesticks, we are like living light candlesticks, right? And we blow that shofar. The sound is amplified and transformed by the ruach that's inside us. The ruach nashima. Ruach nashima means the breath of the ruach from the blast of the Father's breath. Uh, breath in us, on us, and through us. Yeah. And with his Ruach Nishima presence in us, burning inside us, and then we blast the shofar, it's the sound is supernaturally amplified by this by the Ruach Kadosh. So demons do not hear us, they do not see us, they see light in us, on us, they do not hear us, they hear the voice of Yahuwah and the blast of his Ruach flowing through us as we blast that shofar on Yom Teruah or any time we blast. But this is the porthole and the gateway. This is the time and the gateway. Okay. This is when it's dialed in by a specific calendar, time, and place of the Zadok Koenim, the priesthood, the Koenim Zadokites that have a special lining up for a proper time and season of what we're practicing to use now with this calendar, okay? So just a little introduction on that, the importance of it, the power in it, and the anointing of it, okay, that literally sets the captives free. We are praying for people to repent to preparation for atonement, Yom Hak, uh, but Yom HaKippurim, to prepare people to repent of their sins, to call them repentant, into repentance. When Jonah went, the father had a great fish prepared for him and took him to Nineveh and, and spitted him out. Okay? It was the father's will for him to be thrown in the water. It's the Father's divine appointment for him to be swallowed by this great fish. It say whale, just say great fish. And then spit it out on the, on the beach shores of Nineveh. Now, they worshipped a deity of Dagon, similar to the fish deity uh, related to Starbucks. She's, the, the, the sirens are the baby offspring. The sirens are the baby principality offsprings of this particular uh, Dagon or fish. The, the, the Pope uses the fish hat, okay? Uh, and the ancient Babylon and ba Baal and Moabites and all of them had a, re a certain time and season. They put the, the, the fish hat on too, okay? So this is a, a, a deity of the sea. And when he gets spits out of the sea, he comes out probably bleached from the acids of the bean in the belly of this fish. He's smelling like a fish. He's got seaweed and every kind of, just think about it. If you ever look online to see people that have got swallowed up by a, a great white whale, a shark, and warriors on a ship go out there to kill it to find it and kill it and they think that to prove that they found the one that that swallowed the the the, the, the seamen or the, the the particular men that were fishermen that fell in the water or got swallowed up they rip his stomach open and you can watch on like this and parts of the body just come right out some of bodies are swallowed a little chop chop swallow Okay, they're not the not separated. Heads not separated, arms not separated, and when they come out, they're already being acid from the guts, starting to work on the flesh, and they're wrapped in seaweed, seaweed, license plates, debris of the ocean. <laughs> Everything else is falling out of the belly. When you watch these videos or or, or pictures of them doing this process. They do that with regular sharks too. When, they, when a shark eats a, 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 
a surfer takes the leg off. They, to prove that they found the right killer, man-eater, they rip the stomach out to see if they find a bone of the leg or an arm or something to prove that they got the man-eater, okay? And then they all can relax, get on the surfboards, and go back out because most sharks, and, and they, unless the person's cut with the smell of blood in the water, they're not going to attack you. Okay, there's plenty of fish to go around better eating than uh, our feet, our stinking feet, <laughs> and our arms paddling around our surfboard, you know. So picture him being spitted out of the water on the shore. And the rich men of Eve are down there in Santa Monica Beach or Mosa Beach, Redondo Beach or New York Bay. And here comes out. He gets, they get spit and they worship the mighty one of the Dagon, the fish deity. And here's a humanoid being spit out of a fish. And you worship that deity. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to... A messenger, a messenger from Dagon, a messenger from whatever the deity of the sea is. In the time of Nineveh. And he goes around from one end of the city to the other, telling people to repent, smelling like a dirty old seaweed, acid, hair probably, you know, <laughs> hair probably eaten with acid, his beard's all messed up, tangled, smelling like a dead fish from the belly of a fish, and he's telling them to repent. What do you think those people did? They repented. They put sackcloth and ashes, even on the animals. And Nineveh was not destroyed for another 40-something years. Till they backslid and got evil again. And the father didn't send a Yehudi, a Yehudi thrown in the water, you know, to tell them to repent. Okay? But right away, they thought it was their mighty one. I'm sure he explained to them. Probably explain him. He, he's a messenger from the mighty one of Israel. But in their brain, he got spit out of a great fish, and they worship the fish mighty one. Right? So think about it for a minute. That it, It's the call for people to come back to Torah, to keep the Shabbat in order that the land will not be burnt with fire. You know, the scripture talks about lightning bolts. He would send lightning bolts to create fires, to bring people to repent. He was sent hailstones to, to hurt mankind, to get them to repent. He was sent flooding. Well, what happens after fires and everything's burned? Of course, there's rain and then there's flooding. They're already predicting that for Oregon and California. Okay, Massive flooding, mudslides and everything else. And, and, and instead of repenting of their sins, on TV, sackcloth and ashes, and, and blowing the shofar, and calling the, the people to repentance, to repent, and come to Torah, to Torah, to come to the Shabbat, to come to the feast, to come to the right rule of the marriage covenant. Not a rebellious, lawless, prostitute, daughter, harlot of the Vatican. The Father quickened me. He quickened me, and he said, you have counted how many times, and I don't have my notes with me because I'm just flowing in the Ruach right now. How many times did Israel backslide into Baal, to Dagon, to the Baphomet idols? Because sometimes you were reading and they worship their idols in their groves and their graven images, and they sacrifice their firstborn to the, the mighty one, okay? When you look it up in the Hebrew, it'll say a goat-like image, which is Baphomet. It would say that, but you can't see it only in Hebrew, okay? And sometimes it'll describe, you know, the head of the the bull and the body of a man. It's all in Hebrew, though. You, you just see idols, and, and, and they sacrifice their children to the fire and, and stuff like that. Or, or, and when they say sacrifice 
and then they partake of the sacrifice. Whenever you, if I have Beshach and I partake of the sacrifice of the lamb, that means I eat the lamb. But if they sacrifice their sons and daughters and they partake, as it says in Torah, that means they ate the flesh of their babies. Okay? So, all the descriptions there are more in Hebrew than in English and in Greek. It's very vague, and I don't know why they didn't do it properly, openly, and show it. Some concordance and dictionaries will show you when you get to those spots the reference that it is it is Baphomet. It is the 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 the, the Moloch five uh, five pointed star and things like that. Okay, now. I always said, okay, one, two sovereigns went bad, one got worse, one got even backslid worse, and then another sovereign comes, kills all the prophets of Baal and Moloch and Ashroth, which is the Christmas tree where you get the word groves. And, so, and, and then there's a revival in the land of Israel, and they all coming back to Shabbat and Torah because all the Hanavi bring people back to Torah to the Torah, to the feast, to the jubilees, to the seventh year, to the 50th year, right back to where they're supposed to be, square one, coming in through, through the Jordan and coming into the promised land, to repent and come back to the right rule of the marriage and covenants. The spouse of, of Yahuwah, Yasharal. Not going back to anything else. So when I was hearing the video of them going back to G-O-D-L-O-D in front of Baal Abalik, symbol of L-O-R-D, the father says, you have looked at the revival of Israel coming out of their backsliding of pagan deities. The, the Gedeel, the G-O-D, and also the, the Baalams. Baalams is the five of them, and one of them is Shekinah, which is the wife of Yahweh. And Yahweh is one of the Baalims. Historically, I went in the museum and I got videos on that. And I actually went to one of the, personally, my wife and I went to one of the, uh, the synagogues, which is a Latin Catholic word, but the shuls where they worship Yahweh and his wife, Shekinah. And Shekinah is not in the scriptures. If you watched any of my teaching on that, it's only Shekhan of the Kabod of his presence. Okay. Now. The father said, this is a revival of Baal, L-O-R-D, G-O-D. I said, oh, I always count the times of people coming out of that and coming into back to the house of Israel and Yahuwah and following the true Navis, and especially Eliyahu when he killed the, the, the 500 and the 450 uh, of Ashroth and Baal worshipers. Well, they had revivals. A sovereign would die. The Navi would die. A new sovereign would rise up of the son of the sun. And he's all into wealth and pleasure and chariots and, and all the pleasures of the flesh. And he goes to worship Balim and because uh, some of those worshiping, they have orgies and they're into it. So basically they're into orgies and they get to worship at the same time you know, their deity. And so, and they're eating the flesh of the children and sacrifice the firstborn and, and everything else, okay? So they, they have a revival. What we're experiencing this week is a revival of a call to revival back to G-O-D and L-O-R-D. This is a revival. We always look at Israel backsliding and then coming out of darkness and back to Torah. How many times they have revivals of Ashroth, arrivals of the, of, 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 uh, the Canaanite deities, of the Moabite deities, of the Babylonian deity, all these different deities. A matter of fact, when Israel's attacked by Babylon, they're worshiping some of the same deities that Babylon was worshiping, but they said they did it. They, they worshiped so gross <laughs> that they didn't even do it that bad. You know, it's almost like when people say, 
that these progressives are more communist. Oh, it was Van, Van uh, Miguel Putin in Russia. He said in a big lecture hall in front of thousands of people, he says, the United States has been infiltrated, infiltrated by progressive communism, more communist than we never want to be again. He said that out of his own mouth. So progressive communist, and we left it, and we want to stay away from it, but they're trying to bring up a, a new type of Democrat progressive, more progressive than we ever want to be. He said that in front of the Biden lecture. A revival back to G-O-D, L-O-R-D, and most of the Nabi Christians are following. They call them prophets, fortune tellers. You rarely hear them say even the J-Man. They always say, thus says G-O-D, thus says L-O-R-D, thus says G-O-D, thus says... And so that's, that's what all the Nabi, Yermiyahu, Yeshiyahu, Ezekiel, that, that's what they were all experiencing when we call the false prophets. They were prophesying in the name of G-O-D and L-O-R-D. They were prophesying in the different deities of the Mobite spirits and the, the Digons and all the different Ashroth and all the different pagans. And they had revivals because in order for Israel to be 90 plus percent contaminated with the, these pagan deities, they had to have a revival. Right? They had a revival to convert these people because you got to remember these deities, when they do sacrifices of children and blood sacrifices and rituals, and then they, and some of them they have orgies, they have spiritual, spiritual powers. They have spiritual powers. The five Balim converted Israel with demonstration of miracles, signs, and wonders. That's why Eliyahu had to fight them with signs and wonders. Because he had to use real signs and wonders against their fake signs and wonders. And when Eliyahu walked in the presence and challenged them on that mountain and challenged them, his presence with the presence of the Ruach made the switch go off in all five Balims and that's why they were jumping on the altar and cutting themselves to bleed to, to get the attention of the deities because it didn't work anymore. All of a sudden, the magic show stopped. The power ceased. Okay? And that's what we have to see in us. And I see that as I look at all your beautiful faces here on the screen and the anointing of the Ruach Kadosh in you that when you walk in the mist, and there'll be a time the Father's going to tell you to do it. you got to flow in the Ruach. To walk in the mist of these events and stand there with a shofar and you blow it. The anointing of the Ruach in you is going to flip the switch off of all the Ashraf, Balim, Gabriel, and L-O-R-D, and all the deities of their revival of all their Greek-speaking pagan deities, okay? And that spirit they use to spellbound people with signs and wonders is going to become quenched, shut off. They're, they're going to shake themselves like Samson, and there's not going to be no Ruach there. And the Ruach in you will be greater in you that's in them, and the anointing in you is greater in you than in them. And when they try to profit lie, just like that guy from Florida uh, with the spirit of laughter, Howard Brown, when he walked up to my third role and went to me and tried to, uh, he went like this. He couldn't get it out. And he said, oh, the father says you know the truth. And walked away. Well, the truth I was walking, it was in Torah and Yahuwah and Yeshua. He couldn't get it out of his mouth. And when he tried to nabi, or should I say prophet lie, to the friends that went there for me to be there as a challenge, he couldn't get a word to them too. He, he just, he, he, I'll come back to you. You don't have enough faith. Pistos, faita, you know? So, and it proved to my friends that the Ruach Kadosh in us is greater than them. 
And when we're around and we speak it out loud to bind those spirits, it becomes deactivated. It becomes non-void, non-effect. They they just can't operate. And then they blame the people. Oh, you don't have enough faith. (laughs) They always blame somebody else for their own. You know, when I laid hands on my Rockweller's dog with tumor, my dog didn't have emona. I have emona. And when I pour oil for three days and commanded that tumor to fall out and leave his body shrink and diminish, and a week later I spotted it, he had a white, beautiful, new skin with new hair growing out and out in the corner was a ball of hair where the tumor literally fell off his leg my dog didn't have no faith we have the emona right we are the ones with emona we have the ability it's our emona we, you can't quench the ruach kadosh like like Benny Hinn always says, don't quench the spirit. Don't quench your spirit. But the Ruach and us, we can rub, de- rub, bump heads and push around devil worshipers. And he's not going to quench our Ruach and us because we got the Ruach Kadosh, the light of all light. Hallelujah. Okay? Take that scripture out of contents. Don't quench the Ruach. Right? So keep it in mind during their revival. They're having a revival of repentance Back to G-O-D, L-O-R-D, okay? Magnifying one of the harlot daughters of the harlot Circe of the Catholic Church because that's who we were. We were all offshoot daughters, bastard children daughters, spit it out of the Catholic Church with different denominations, but we were still the prostitute daughters, children of the prostitute daughters of the daughters, Okay? of the harlot and now we're we're married in white robes of zadik tamadim hot kiroim set apart called out ones in white robes of zadik of righteousness and we're married to, uh, to yahuwah as the house of israel and we have mikvah tevilah we pure garments and we're completely not in the prostitute business anymore in the harlot business of christianity and we were ignorant. We're dumb and dumber. We didn't know. It was microwaved and microwaved and re-microwaved and re-microwaved out to us. And we, we produced children ourselves that were microwaved and repented. And now we're teaching the true Torah to all people we come in contact. In Yorel, Perek, Stein, Pasuk, Ahut. Chapter 2, verse 1, blow a ram's horn in Zion, sound an alarm in my, in my set-apart mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the yom of Yahweh is coming, for it is near. Did he say sound the alarm only in Zion, Israel? No. He said sound the alarm from, from Zion, the, one of the five mountains of Zion in Jerusalem, but it's for of the Kodesh mountain to all the inhabitants of the earth to tremble for the Yom of Yahuwah is coming for it is near the day of Yahuwah darkness and gloom a Yom of clouds and thick darkness like the morning clouds spread over the mountains of people many and strong the like of whom has never been seen never been nor shall there ever be again after them to the years of many generations. Ahead of them our fire has consumed them, consumed, excuse me, and behind them a flame burns. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, and behind them a de- desert waste, and from them there is no escape. Verse 4. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and they run like steeds, as the noise of chariots they leap over the mountaintops as the noise of a flame of fire concerning the stubble as a mighty people set or battle array before them people are in anguish all faces become flushed they run like a mighty men they climb the wall like men of battle everyone goes on his way and they 
do not break ranks. And they do not press one another. Everyone goes in his path. They fall among the weapons, but they do not stop. They rush on the wall. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth shall tremble before them. The Shamaim shall shake. The Shemesh and Kodesh shall be darkened. And the, the brilliant ones Right? The luminaries withdraw their brightness. And Yahuwah shall give forth his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For mighty is the doer of his word. You hear that? The doer of his word makes the word mighty and great. For Yahuwah, for the Yom of Yahuwah is great and very awesome. Who does bear it? Not just read it. Not just say it, but bear it. Yet even now, declares Yahuwah, turn to me with all your voice and your heart, excuse me, and with fastings and with weepings and with mourning. This is the come Yom HaKippori. And tear your heart and not your garments and turn back to Yahuwah, your Aloha. For he shows favor and is comp compassionate, patient, of a great kindness, and he shall relent concerning the evil. Who knows? He might turn and relent and leave a better court behind him, a grain of offering, a drink offering for Yahuwah your Aloha. Blow the ram's horn in Zion and set apart a fast. Call the assembly. Gather the people. Set the assembly apart. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, the nursing babes, and let all the bridegroom come out from her, his room and the bride from her dressing room. And let the Kohenim servants, servants of Yahuwah weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare your people, O Yahuwah, and do not give your inheritance to reproach, for the Goyim do rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is their aloha? Let's blow the shofar again, brother. What I am waiting for is someone of the government of California and Oregon to come on TV, blow the shofar, and call the people to repent of their sins and escort their governors and their mayors out the door and call the people into sackcloth and ashes and to repent for their sins in their land. That's what they need to do, to repent of their sins for allowing a lawlessness and the fire shall burn and shall cause a purification. Then the floods will cause a washing and a cleansing. And the, because those, even when the fire started, with they claim under satellite count, 3,500 3, plus lightning bolts starting fires. It says in the, in the Torah, in the Torah, that the Father will send his lightning bolts to bring judgment on certain scriptures of judgment on a land. And thus what those lightning bolts are. And Father, we just thank you for your word, but we pray that people repent of their sins, their sins of porn, their sins of all the wickedness of child trafficking, their sins of of all the wicked movies. And we thank you that Holly Weird is going broke in the Hollywood industry and the movie industry is going broke during this time. What they meant for bad against us is also turning against their profit and gain. And Father, we thank you, Father, for this reverse of the curse that they wished upon all they wanted and hoped for on all mankind of their states. But now it's bouncing on their 
their pocketbook and purse of money and revenue. Father, we, we ask there'll be repentance for the drug dealing, the repentance for the alcoholism, repentance for all the wickedness that goes on of human sacrificing, drinking the blood, eating the flesh of the firstborn babes. Father, we ask forgiveness in the land and we call people to repentance, but the part of the call to repentance is that lawlessness would cease and right rule would go forth. Righteousness of the Zadik Tamadim Kodeshim Ha Kiroim will go forth in the land of these lands, not just in my land, in Texas, throughout all our regions, our capital of Austin, but throughout Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and other regions in Chicago and New York, that people we call the repentance of their sins, and they will be arrested and put before all to be ashamed of their sins. The people must be put in front of public shame to call the nation into repentance and point out the sins that they have committed. Father, we pray this right now as we blow the shofar and we call the, the nations and the cities of the, the USA to repent of their sins and their iniquity. We call, we call, we call striking blushing conscience in their nefesh and their lab, their lob, to repent to repent, to repent of their sins. And they called to atonement and not through the, through the fake it to the naked J-man and not to G-O-D and L-O-R-D, but they'd be called to repent and turn away from their wicked deeds and come to Turat and come to the right rule of Shabbat that the land is going to rest this year. The land is going to rest because the fires have consumed the land and it's called the land to its Shabbat. And the land will rest this year, says Yahuwah, because his fire is consuming it and it would rest from all the consumption of the harvesters that they continue to do and don't give the land a rest. And we pray that it would rest and the people would repent. And it says that the Torah, that the lightning bolts would strike and the fires and the hail and the floods would come as an act to vomit out the people of the land, the people that have lived in, Ca in California and Oregon and rule the land with an iron fist, with their wicked laws and renouncing true uh, Torah of Yahuwah and bringing in their own laws of all forms of progressive wickedness, the land would vomit them out. And I pray they'll be vomited out and the salt of the earth will be remaining, like some of them from California that are watching today, there'll be the salt remaining as the wickedness is vomited out, that, Father, that they will be the salt of the earth, blow the shofar, as in Nanavi, from one end of the cities to the other end, calling them to repent of their sins in the Shem of Yahushua. We pray right now.